all right everybody welcome back to the channel my name is travis and um we're here on a hot day in north carolina and um what do you know another broken ac system i don't know how all these things happen but in north carolina it's a typical day in the park acs are breaking down all the time we're running like crazy um uh, but now i'm actually on a uh, another no ac call duh um sorry i'm kind of nervous with getting used to this camera but um they're calling in saying their ac's broke uh they don't know what's wrong with it and um i don't know what's wrong with it either so what i want to do is i want to show you a service call from start to finish um basically diagnosing uh being blind and not knowing what's going on with the AC system. I'm going to show you guys how I start the service call, what I check, uh, and all I know about this call is they said their house is hot and they want it fixed. So uh, I'm going to show you how I fix or at least show you how I diagnose an air conditioner from start to finish because we may have to uh, order a part or something like that. And so if you're ready to do it, I'm here to do it for you. Let's get to another call. See you in a second. All right, guys. Uh, I just, well, first thing, if this is a, a service call start to finish, I always first go in there and talk to the customer, find out, find out what's going on, uh, what type of problem they have. Okay, the, um, the customer told me, she said, really, what's going on with the system? She said the air is blowing out of the uh, vents, but uh, it's just not cooling, and we've had some really hot hot temperature in north carolina the past couple weeks she said it just won't keep up with the house um basically i went to uh went to the thermostat i turned the thermostat down uh, uh there the thermostat did have a uh, display on it so we know that the thermostat has power when we, when we turned it on the thermostat kicked on the blower came on now so if the blower comes on as we know uh, the furnace has power um, that the fan is running and the only thing that's in to do with your air conditioner um, is basically your your blower motor your evaporator coil and your drain um, so I don't think right now is anything probably going on with the evaporator coil but we'll find out more when we check the outside unit so with those two with those two things turning the AC down it does kick on the blower starts that basically tells us we need to go to the outdoor unit and see what's going on with that so let's go to the outdoor unit and see what uh see what we find all right so we're going to the outside unit here so as we see the we notice that the outside fan is running um, we can hear the compressor going, so we know it's not an issue with uh, either the fan or the compressor. Um, I notice the, the lines are pretty, pretty wet. So the next step of what I do with this is I don't think it's an electrical problem because all of our electrical parts are running. Uh, the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, check the Freon charge and uh, give me a second to gut the gauges and I will... Um, We'll see what's going on from there. All right, guys, everything hooked up. Um, I'm not gonna go into the uh, blue side where it goes. Uh, I'll do that on another video. Um, if you want to know uh, what colors go to what line, um, basically, I have videos on that. But uh, what I'm doing now is I'm checking the Freon charge. But um, what we got to do first is we've got to figure out what type of Freon we have in the system. And then if you look at the system, that's an old train unit. I know it's R22, but if you want to know how do you figure that out, uh, I'm going to show you so you, if, you're, if you're not familiar, you'll know exactly uh, what type of Freon is in the system. So what we need to do is we need to find the uh, equipment tag. Alright, here's our equipment tag here. I hope you can see everything. Uh, it's kind of close to the house. But we want to look down for Freon. And right here, refrigerant 22. 
we know the system uses R22, so let's check the, uh, the Freon. So what we need to do, we got the gauges hooked up, we want to check. The only way to know 100% if your refrigerator charge is right is you need to do a uh, superheat and subcooling reading. So um, what I'm do, what I'm gonna do is I've got the uh, my temperature probe on the high, on the low side of the system, and I've got my gauges hooked up, and that's reading 70 degrees. Now what you want to do is you go over to your gauges, and you find your R22. Green is for R22, pink is for R410A, and you get your temperature, and that's reading. I don't know if you can see it, probably about, about 31. So that means we've got like a 40 degree uh, superheat. Uh, and on a piston unit, which just has a piston with it from the age of the, the system, that's a really high, um, that's a really high superheat. superheat that tells you um, uh, basically what your evaporator coil is doing. So basically how we get our superheat is um, we take the temperature at our line minus the temperature at our evaporator coil. And that's basically, I explain it, that's your superheat. Um, now we want to do the same thing for the high side. So, uh, so let's get the temperature of the subcooling. So we're going to take this line off, this temperature off this, I mean probe off this line. Let's put it on our, on our high side line. Now we got a pretty high head pressure. It's reading like, ah, uh, you see, yeah. I don't need my glasses, but I think it's reading around 310. The temperature on that is 100 and... ...132... So that's a... So that's a pretty high super subcooling that we have on this. Okay, with it being a high superheat, that tells me that uh, it's starving the um, the evaporator. Having such a, a high pressure on our uh, our high side, a lot of times what that happens is that this uh, if this outside coil is dirty. So basically, what we're going to do is, um, and I did well. I already looked at the um, at the coil outside, and this coil is filthy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this coil out. Um, get all the dirt and everything on it and then let's try our readings again and see what we get. Alright guys, I uh, just watched the, uh, washed the condensing coil off. And you may be saying, well Travis, aren't you going to show us how to do, how to wash out the condensing coil? Well, not today. If you want us to check that out, I, man, I have to have a way for you to keep watching my videos. So check out my video on how to properly wash out a, a condensing coil. And that'll teach you exactly in depth how to do that. But okay, I just washed the coil, so let's check our pressures again, see if it's changed, and then go back and check our superheat and subcooling. See, that just by washing that evaporator coil, that brought that head pressure down from over 300 uh, to 225. And so our our temperature on the um, for R22 is around 110. Uh, we're at 85, so 85, 95, 105, 25 degrees of subcooling. That brings us a little bit more in range. Um, now let's check our superheat. Okay, it's reading about 66. Our temperature on our uh, suction uh, on our suction side is basically now below 30. 
you know what that means with heating and air conditioning, if your evaporator is below 30 degrees, that's going to call icing of your inside coil, and you can actually have icing outside. So what we're going to need to do is add some Freon to it and, um, and get this taken care of. So basically with this system, uh, the system is, is low in charge. So that's basically what the problem she was having was it's not completely out or anything like that, but she's saying on those really hot days it just won't keep up. Uh, so it ended up, ended up being, I mean, this thing may be about a pound low in Freon. So um, as always, I was telling you about leaks. About any time you add Freon to a system, you need to always uh, recommend a leak search because of the system's low in Freon. Uh, it's got to be leaking out somewhere. I always use this analogy. Freon is not like... Um, it's not like uh, a car using gas. It doesn't use up Freon. If, it, if it's low, it has to be leaking out somewhere. So always give the customer the choice of having a leak search done. Um, basically, this system is probably 30, somewhere around 20 to 30 years old. I don't think it would be a wise um, uh, thing to do a leak search and spend that much money and fix whatever's leaking. Basically, if, you know, this would be one that I would give them the op option to leak seal to uh, maybe get them a little bit more life out of it if they need to um, save up money or something for a brand new system. But this would be a perfect system to, to recommend replacing. So um, you may say, is this the end of the video? Yeah, I'm not going to go into the charging of the system, just like washing the coil. I want you to watch my uh, video on how to properly charge an AC system. So if you want to know how to charge this system or any system up, check out my video on how to properly charge a uh, uh, AC system with R22. So uh, this is another service called Down. I'm going to pop this Freon in. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe on the channel. It helps me out more than you know. It makes me makes me feel like that I'm doing something something good for, for you guys and, uh, and you enjoy it and you get something out of it. So, another AC down, but there's more, more to come because there's always an AC broke down. So, see you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching.